and we are here to serve you. everyone welcome to the word with sue in this special edition we are giving thanks to god through the hymns and we are honoring our dear sister sheree williams who passed on before us but we give thanks for her life we thank god for her legacy and we're just going to be remembering her through some of these wonderful hymns you know there are so many contemporary songs today that we love to sing, but we still connect with those old hymns that just bring us right into the presence of God. And we're giving God thanks today with the well, and we're going to lift up the name of Jesus with these songs. Now we're going to go over to my sister, Suzette Blunt, who's going to be sharing a hymn of praise with us today. Come on. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my Sherry sang on her album um, Hymns to Him and one of them that resounds is resounding in my spirit is praise to the Lord the Almighty praise to the Lord the Almighty I love that song creation. I love it um, and there's so much history behind it yeah that's why I felt so led to go research it myself and I'm excited for what I'm learning about awesome. it yeah I, I love that album these days, it's kind of hard to listen to because it, you know, it brings me sadness sometimes because yeah. I miss my sister. But they're such beautiful hymns yeah. that we can really connect with. Um, though there's a lot of them are really old, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they're so relevant and, and they're uh, so rich. You know, yeah, and I mean? the, yeah, yeah, and they're great stories behind these. And these all of hymns. them line up with scripture. If you look at the lyrics, they all line up mm -hmm. with scripture. Mm -hmm. And I'm, and I'm just so grateful for it. One, the, even one of the verses talk about praise of the Lord who over all things so wondrously reigneth. Wow. And one of them goes into how we're wondrously made. Yeah. All of that is scripture. Awesome. And I'm so grateful. It's so perfect for this Thanksgiving month. Oh, yes, yes. We are giving thanks all month long. Mm -hmm. And today is no exception. The word with Sue, with the well, we are giving thanks to yes. God for his blessings and especially for our for the life of our dear sister yeah. Sheree Williams. So stay tuned as we're going to show you just a, a brief story behind this hymn. Yes, praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh my soul, praise. This week's featured hymn was written by Joachim Neander, 1650 to 1680. Though he lived only 30 years, his life and his heritage were steeped in wonderful traditions. And by a surprising twist, his name is carried forward in the scientific community today. Neander was the fifth in a line of Protestant ministers in his family tree named Joachim. All had been powerful preachers and by tradition alone, Neander had the attention of his community. He started his youth as something of a prodigal. The story is told that one day 
he and his friends went to a church service to make fun of the speaker. As Neander listened to the message, though his heart was touched and his mind was changed, he reconsidered his plans and his attention turned to things that were at least somewhat less prodigal, but he still had a very independent streak. That independent streak nearly led to his death. One day he was chasing an animal through the woods. He chased so far and so long that he was unable to return home before the sun set. In the daylight, the hills in this area were dangerous. In the dark, they were deadly. It was not long before Neander found himself on the brink of falling from a high precipice. Frozen with fear, he prayed to God for help. As Neander related the story, God gave him the courage and strength to move away from the danger. From that day on, Neander devoted himself entirely to serving God. At age 24, he became headmaster of a grammar school owned by the Reformed Church in Dusseldorf. The school did well, but Neander could not confine his interests to work. He enjoyed the woods and the hills, and frequently wandered in the countryside. There was a cave in the hills that he especially enjoyed, and he would conduct meetings there to discuss the Bible and various beliefs espoused by the new Protestant sects such as Lutherans and Calvinists. These meetings had not been approved by the local elders who arrived at the school one day in 1678 to publicly remove Neander from his post. After that, Neander spent even more time at the cave. He was so closely associated with this place that the area came to be known as the Neander Valley and the cave itself as Neander's Cave. Almost two centuries later, evidence of Neanderthal man was found in this place. It is intriguing that the name of this powerful preacher of faith should become connected with a fossil record that is relied on by some scientists as evidence of evolution. Having lived and roamed that very valley, though Neander clearly stated his conclusion. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Creation is here because God spoke. God looked at the creation and called it good. Consider your origins, the source of your existence, as you read the words of this week's featured hymn. Yes. on the song, um, Praise, praise, praise to the, the Lord, Lord, the Almighty. And just to know that someone took the time to write such a song, and it wasn't even first written in English. Oh. It was written in German. German. Uh, so we didn't have access to it really exactly. until, what, when was it written? Well, it was written in 1680, right. first in German. Wow. And then translated all the way later in 1863, thereabout, by a woman named Catherine. Wow. So, <laughs> so we're now living in the 21st century, right? And it's 21st still relevant. Century. So from the 17th century yeah. to now. I mean, awesome. Awesome, right? awesome. And to show the richness of the song and the mm. rich heritage of such a song and for us to be benefiting from it now. Yeah. Just, I think God inspired. And I think it's similar to the Bible. I mean, we think about it. The Bible wasn't written originally in English. Exactly. Right? So and now we have access to the word of God. Right? Really, and we benefit from it. Exactly. So, so we thank God for these people who yeah. are allowed to translate these hymns yeah. so that we can now have access to them. Exactly. And we really should not just... Um, put these into a vault somewhere. Exactly. We really need to sing these hymns. They're beautiful exactly. and they're just real wonderful stories behind exactly. these, these, these hymns. And to know that these people didn't really take credit for it because now it's public domain. It's public domain. We right? all have access to it. All have access to it. So. And there is another hymn that we want to feature in this Word with Sue edition. Mm -hmm. And it's a very popular hymn. Yes. And it is called It Is Well With My it Soul. Well. Take a look at the story behind It Is Well. Horatio Spafford was a well-known lawyer and businessman in Chicago in the 1860s, where he lived with his wife Anna and their five children. He had invested heavily in real estate along the shores of Lake Michigan. He was a prosperous man and a devout Christian. However, in 1870, a series of events began to turn Horatio's world upside down.
That year, Horatio and Anna's only son died of scarlet fever at the tender age of only four. A year later, while the Spaffords were still grieving the loss of their son, the Great Chicago Fire broke out and destroyed nearly every one of Horatio's investments. His entire life savings was gone. Aware of the toll these disasters had taken on his family, Horatio decided to take his wife and four daughters on a holiday to England, where they planned to accompany the famous evangelist D.L. Moody on his next crusade. However, just before they set sail, a last-minute business development forced Horatio to delay. Not wanting to ruin the family holiday, he persuaded his family to go on as planned, and he would follow along later. With this decided, Horatio stayed in Chicago while Anna and the girls boarded the French steamship Ville du Havre to set sail for England. But several days later, Horatio received devastating news. The Ville du Havre had been struck by an iron sailing vessel from England. The ship sank in only 12 minutes, claiming the lives of 226 passengers. It was the worst disaster in naval history until the sinking of the HMS Titanic 40 years later. The next day, he received the telegraph from Anna from Wales. It read these six words, survived alone, what should I do? The Spafford's four daughters were among those who perished. After hearing the terrible news, Horatio boarded the next ship out of New York to join his bereaved wife. During his voyage, the captain of the ship called him to the bridge. A careful reckoning has been made, he said, and I believe we are now passing the very place where the Ville du Havre sank. And it was there while staring into the watery grave of his beloved daughters, that Horatio penned the words to the great hymn, It is well with my soul. trumpet shall resound yeah oh, let me think about those words and the part that's sticking to me right now is um, when peace like a river that's attendeth it. my oh, way man. when you think your way is just rough you can't even see the way out mm -hmm. but peace like a river it just brings you stillness mm -hmm. calmness mm -hmm. and remember the word that says we shall be like tree planted by the rivers of water that's who we are yes. we are blessed Blessed is the man that walketh not in the house of the ungodly, 
but nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the, the seat, seat of the scornful. But where are we planted? By the rivers of the water. water. With the light in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate, meditate day, day and night. He shall be like the, the tree planted, planted by the rivers of the water. That's my favorite scripture. Yes. It's Psalms 1. Well. You should read it sometime. <laughs> yeah. And um, God has given us this sweet peace, this wonderful peace. There's another hymn that says, yeah. peace, peace, wonderful, wonderful peace, peace coming down from the Father above. I mean, these songs just really get you into yes. the presence of God. Yes. And I'm so grateful for my sister who, yes. you know, through her, her Hymns to Him album, um, really, really just, just really reminds us mm -hmm. of the goodness of Jesus. She didn't entertain, but she, she, she really ministered really, yes. the word through her songs. And, and these really are songs that minister. Yeah. These are songs that really minister to the mm -hmm. soul, that makes you just want to honor the Lord and Savior. And that's really what we're about here at The Well. We want to lift up the name of Jesus, and we want others to come and see the light yes. that salvation brings. Mm -hmm. That Jesus Christ, our Savior, he has brought this hope to the world. Yes that now we are all partakers yes. all beneficiaries yes of the word of god and we just want to worship him together through these hymns exactly we want to lift him up we want to adore him for he is lord mm -hmm. and so come join us this entire month as we give him thanks through the hymns and as we remember our sister and maybe someone needs to know it is well with their soul. Maybe we need to sing that for them. Okay. That that just that chorus. It is well. Okay, that's so we'll end by singing that last hymn. It is well. It is well with my soul. With my soul. It is